The National Professional Fishing League is going to be the first to prohibit forward-facing sonar. That's what we're going to talk about right now. If you like this kind of content, click that like and subscribe button, become part of the team and family, and let me say thank you. I appreciate all the new views, the memberships, the comments, the everything that's going on on the channel. I am so humbled and honored that people get on here and comment and be part of the team that it's just, it's an amazing feeling. So thank you. But if you're not a subscriber, click that button and become part of the team. It is now official. The National Professional Fishing League will prohibit forward-facing sonar. And they will do that for the 2025 season. This year, they will continue to allow anglers to use the technology. They'll also allow anglers to use that technology in their championship at the beginning of next year. But why is this so significant? And are other organizations going to follow suit? First and foremost, we have to say congratulations to the NPFL for making such a historic change in professional fishing. And I know this probably was an extremely hard decision to come by, but this is a business decision for them. And I had lots of questions, so I sent them out and they replied to me. Here's the questions I asked the NPFL. Were they worried about losing current anglers or losing future anglers or, youth, or losing youth anglers coming into the MPFL and competing on their stage? MPFL has been very vocal about saying what an angler does is needs to worry about himself and his family before joining their organization. They don't want people to join and then be upset or hurt their family situation. But at the same time, they expect to lose some anglers, but they expect to gain more. And I think they will gain more. There are people on the NPFL that are very dominant with forward-facing sonar. Their companies are based on technology and putting that together. And if they're unhappy with this new prohibit of forward-facing sonar, then it only makes sense for them to try to find another way to go fish. But the NPFL wants their anglers as happy as possible. My next question was, do they do they think it's going to hurt the youth anglers joining them? So does the MPFL think they're going to lose the, their youth anglers? They don't. They think that this allows youth anglers to come back and show that they're just not forward-facing sonar anglers. That they can catch fish the traditional way. That they will have a chip on their shoulder and it gives them, the youth anglers, an opportunity to prove to everyone that they can do it the way we've always done it. I asked, was this sponsor oriented or they were, were they worried about losing sponsors? The MPFL and Brad Fuller and the team put months and months, over six months into this decision. He talked to anglers, he talked to sponsors, he talked to companies and got their opinion and then based his opinion and the results and made this decision, this historic decision. And right now they don't have electronic sponsors and that has a big influence on this decision. But they didn't have any sponsors asking them to prohibit this technology. They didn't have any for or against. They didn't take a poll and ask people and the sponsors, what do you want? They were trying to base their decision on what's best for their business, for their business plan now and the future of the league. My next question was, was being one of the first or being the first to prohibit this technology was it important for MPFL? That answer is yes. They wanted to draw a line in the sand and show where they stand and show that this is the way we want to do our business. We want our fans to enjoy it. We want our anglers to enjoy it. And we want the people that are sponsors and businesses that are behind us to realize we're doing what's right for our business. They wanted to be the first and not the last and not the second. They wanted to show that they were willing to make this decision ahead of everyone else where everyone else is waiting and listening and hearing other people's opinion. These guys wanted it done right and right now. My next question was, is there an option to go back? MPFL said there, yes, nothing is carved in stone. They can go back and refine it if they need to. If it's really bad, they'll change the rules. But they're looking at the rules at all options every year for what's better, the best option for that organization. And this decision can be modified, and it is not irreversible. My next question is, are they going to change the schedule for 2025? Are they going to look to go to places where it's more traditional fishing, where you can do skipping docks or structure-oriented instead of places that had deep water? And they said no. Anglers can catch them deep, 
They can catch them shallow. They're not going to change how they do their schedule. And I really do appreciate that. If it's tough fishing, it's tough fishing. Everyone has the same playing field. If it's a deep water place versus a shallow water place, the anglers have the same option and the same opportunity to catch fish. So I really do appreciate that they're not going to try to change the schedule. Did they have more anglers for it or against it? I was told that a vast majority of the anglers were in the middle. Of course, there were some that were very pro and there were some that were very against. But a majority of the anglers were straight down the middle. They weren't crazy upset or crazy happy about it. There were some anglers that just said it. We, I think it's better without it. But there were also anglers that said, you know what? I catch fish more fish with it. And again, they didn't take a poll of the anglers and make this decision. This was a business decision for them. They talked to people. They talked to sponsors. They talked to all sorts of people and got their opinion and then based that opinion on what they were going to do. And the biggest thing I can say about this is if you've listened in this, it hasn't been a ban. It's about they're prohibiting it. They don't want to be, they don't want to come across it, uh, people saying they banned this technology. They're prohibiting one part of this technology. There's still going to be 2D and side scan and all that other stuff will be allowed. Only thing they're going to prohibit is the forward facing sonar, the live forward facing sonar. And you can see where they've done the due diligence of listening and learning from others and then basing their opinion or basing their results and then putting it out there. This isn't something that was just willy dillyed around and just happened overnight. There's six plus months that have went into this decision to prohibit forward facing sonar. My last question was the one that they liked the most. And it was ultimately, why was this decision made? Ultimately, this was a business decision. It was nothing against forward facing so uh, sonar or the technology or the businesses or those other companies. Nothing, more or less. This was about making the NPFL better. No polls. It was for the best interest of the anglers and the business and what's right for the future and the organization. And everyone's take was considered, but they're looking for the future. They're looking towards the future. And this is a huge historic event that they've done. And we'll see others that do some changes, but this is, they are the, this is amazing and they are the first. But what do you think? Do you think it was the right decision to prohibit forward-facing sonar in their tournaments for 2025? That's what I want to know. So comment below and tell me what you think. Hope you guys like this. Hope you appreciate it. Again, congrats to the NPFL. Remember, take a kid fishing. Get your fish on. I will talk to you very, very soon. Cheers and thank you.